Here we go. I think we are good. Okay, recording has begun. Um, Chris, you got your screen share good to go. Anything else you need? Uh, I think that's it. Can you hear me clearly? No problem. Let's go ahead and good. start. Thanks, everybody. Let's give a hand to Chris. Welcome. Excellent. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, greetings. Thank you for attending my presentation. Uh, my name is Chris Lear, and I'm currently working at Nanzan University. Uh, I'm here today to present to you about using news as a way of introducing culture while also challenging your students' four language skills. Oh. There we go. Uh, so <clears throat> this all started in uh, 2018. I was given the opportunity to teach a lecture-based course on a culture of my choosing, um, to which I chose my home state of Alaska. It's not really well represented in Japan. Uh, I've rarely, if at all, ever met anyone from Alaska, and I feel my students probably have the same experience, so I kind of wanted to, to open their minds a little bit more to the culture uh, of the North. Um, so students taking the course were second year English majors enrolled in a four year program. Uh, they were generally quite motivated and positive toward English being used in the classroom. Uh, so I had to consider this when developing uh, my curriculum. Um, although it was a lecture uh, class, I wanted them to engage with culture more directly. Um, and for this class, it was held uh, weekly and the entire course was completed over one semester. Um, so that's the, that's the details of the, the course. Um, so I need to think about the curriculum. Uh, when creating the curriculum for this course, I first set the course goals for my students. Uh, as an elective course being part of a foreign language program, I aim to test all four language skills. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted my students to come out of the course with a basic understanding of general Alaskan culture, which would come mainly from my lectures, um, but I also wanted it to come from, <clears throat> you, hold on, uh, to come from uh, their classmates as well. Um, topics such as history, physical and political geography, economy, uh, ethnic groups, the treatment of Alaskan native peoples, wildlife, daily life, and of course, festivals and cuisine were all part of my planned lectures. Um, thus attending to their listening skills. Uh, for the reading component, I aimed for them to identify main ideas of self-researched articles. Uh, next, for their writing skills, I planned for them to keep a journal of all their notes and summaries. And finally, uh, during the semester, they were to give two five minute presentations on a topic of their choice after confirming it with the teacher. Uh, by setting these four goals, I was able to clearly emphasize the use of the four skills and could begin considering activities to include in my lecture. So uh, with so many broad topics, I had to come up with a way to give uh, students a means of accessing materials uh, that could connect with the class and meet the course goals. I also wanted it to be a warm-up activity so that students could, one, get into English mode, and two, engage with cultural discussions to generate interest at the beginning of each class. Based on these criteria, uh, I remembered an activity I had done when I was a university student. So this is kind of uh, connecting to the, the first presentation uh, of the day of us using our own experiences. Um, so before I came to Japan, I actually studied Japanese at university uh, and there was one activity that I clearly remember. Uh, in my business Japanese class, uh, there is this warm up activity uh, which was a weekly assignment where um, students had to find an article from a Japanese newspaper about Japanese politics, uh, economy, or culture. The students then had to summarize it, bring the article to class, and then share it with the class. Even as a student, I could see the activity while unique had some flaws. Now, although I'm saying that there's flaws, this 
this activity stuck with me. I remembered it. I clearly remembered it. Um, and so that was kind of impactful to me. Um, so even though the class members were third year Japanese majors, uh, their ability was still quite limited. So reading and summarizing a newspaper uh, in Japanese would have been a task that most of my classmates uh, would have been unable to complete. Um, therefore, the entire activity was completed in English. Uh, it was simply designed to expose class members to Japanese current affairs. Another negative aspect was that the activity was unassessed. And even though my classmates always completed the task, often students would check an online newspaper 10 minutes before class and bring the first article they could find, uh, resulting in several class members bringing in the same article to class. Uh, finally, the teacher would call on each student to explain their article to the class one by one. This resulted in a large amount of time for just the warm up activity. So uh, by recognizing these issues, I was able to make some adjustments that suited the needs of my lecture course and the needs of my students. Um, so here's a copy of one of the handouts I gave to my students. It's not complicated, it's very simple. Uh, the weekly assignment tasked the students. Uh, uh, sorry, the weekly assignment was uh, was tasked to students to search Alaskan-based newspapers for an article. Uh, I gave them a selection of six different newspapers in order to provide them with the flexibility to investigate the news in different regions of Alaska. Uh, after selecting uh, and reading an article. Students had to write uh, a short summary in the box on the left, uh, naming the newspaper they used and the date of the article. This handout was collected at the end of the course as part of their written journal. Uh, students <coughs> then brought their summaries to class and shared them in groups of three, about groups of three, uh, which they had around 10 minutes to complete. Uh, the articles, the summaries, and sharing were all completed uh, in uh, English. Um, <clears throat> now, for the, the, the study that I did, small scale study, emphasis small, <laughs> um, I had a colleague who uh, is currently teaching culture courses. Um, I'm, I'm currently not teaching culture, culture courses um, because I've uh, since moved on from this university where I was teaching these. Um, but I do have a colleague um, who is teaching culture courses. Um, and so uh, I want to talk to you about my uh, research with, uh, uh, through her. Um, she's currently teaching uh, three semester long culture courses, two third year European culture classes, and one Oceania uh, culture class. Even though the goals of her courses and of my culture course are not identical, the warm activity is still um, is still suitable for the class, um, and it's still it's the same kind of activity. Um, for her students, <clears throat> they were tasked to research and summarize the article each week from a list of newspapers. Students that had ten minutes in class to share their summaries in small groups. Okay, so uh, the 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 um, the activity that I did and the activity that she's doing are the same kind of activity. Uh, students were then given a 15 item Likert scale questionnaire. The Likert scale uh, has six points ranging from strongly disagree uh, to strongly agree. Uh, the questions aim to explore students' positive negative responses to statements related to uh, three categories, ease, enjoyment, and value of the activity. Uh, each issue has a positive and negative statement. Additionally, there were three open questions. Uh, the entire questionnaire is written in English. However, for the open questions, students were told that they could answer in either English or Japanese. Uh, the questionnaire was given once in the middle of the semester. <clears throat> so for these results, uh, the scores of each class was combined for an average of all three. Uh, first, looking over the results of the Likert scale questions, we can see that the students' responses for ease of the activity. 
Uh, starting off with finding an article, students found the research aspect of the activity to be slightly easy with an average score of 4.33. Reading the article resort, resulted in a sco score of 3.67, suggesting that the activity was neither too difficult nor too easy. Uh, finally, the questionnaire showed that uh, summarizing the article was the most challenging of three, resulting in a score of 3.25. Uh, still above average, but um, definitely getting more towards the, the center. <clears throat> uh, moving on to student enjoyment of the activity, uh, they showed a positive opinion about reading the article. Um, sharing the article, and hearing, the, uh, hearing from their group members, uh, with the latter being the most preferred. When the students really enjoyed interacting, um, especially when they weren't in the spotlight having to uh, read their summary. Uh, finally, the next category looks at the students' perceived value of the activity. <clears throat> Uh, students responded positively for both the items inquiring about helpfulness in understanding other cultures and learning more about uh, other, culture, other cultures' news. <clears throat> when given a statement about the activity share being a waste of time, okay, so we have a kind of the opposite. Instead of looking at the value, we're looking at uh, uh, if it if it's, has, has no value. Um, a uh, majority of the students strongly disagreed uh, and gave it, which, which resulted in an average score of 2.14. Okay, so uh, the students definitely felt that the activity had um, value. <clears throat> so, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, students were given three open questions. As I mentioned, the students were instructed to use either L1 or L2 for these responses. It should be noted <clears throat> that a majority of their responses were given in English. Uh, the responses were organized into categories uh, based on the content. Uh, the category that received the most responses was knowledge about other cultures. Students often commented about knowing more. Do I have the, oh yes. <clears throat> Uh, students often commented about knowing more about the world outside of Japan, while also commenting that the activity helped expose them to reading materials they otherwise normally wouldn't read. For obvious reasons, the news students researched was related to the culture the course focused on. Um, and then finally, uh, addition, uh, finally some students uh, recognized that this was uh, a unique feature that only this type of course could provide. Okay. <clears throat> Give you a, a moment just to kind of read through these. There's gonna be a few of these with uh, student feedback. So I'll give you just a minute to read. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> so the second category uh, was comments about the enjoyment of the activity. Uh, a, common, a common theme is uh, students often enjoyed the social aspect of the activity. Um, some students highlighted their preference for it being a good warm-up activity. Um, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to conduct any kind of follow-up interviews, so I couldn't know whether the student felt happy because they found a good quality article or they found an article with good or positive news. Um, however, the activity did make them feel happy, so I think that's a, that's a perk. Regardless of, their, of the reasons that made them happy, it made them happy. Um, now, although I've been showing you some positive reactions, there also were some criticisms of the uh, activity. Uh, some students commented that the journal handout didn't include a section for them to also write down notes about their group members' summaries. 
uh, because uh, it was divided into the two parts, their own summary, and then the, the notes for that day's lecture. Uh, they wanted uh, a little bit more space uh, to, to kind of take in, <coughs> take in what their <coughs> group members were saying. Sorry, hold on, I'm losing my voice. Uh, <clears throat> Um, the most common criticism was related to the length of the sharing activity being too long. I remember it was <clears throat> for both my, uh, my own experience and, and my coworkers experience, we said it for 10 minutes um, and they felt that this was just too much. Um, <clears throat> uh, they, they noticed that uh, they'd finish, they quickly finished sharing their, their summaries and then some other groups would just start having their own kind of uh, chat time about uh, non-article related uh, things, maybe in, in, L, uh, in L1. <laughs> um, in addition to this feedback, some students suggested a time limit on the sharing time to challenge them to highlight the most important parts of the article for them to summarize. So uh, if your students do have that ability to <clears throat> recognize the, the key points of an article, then it could be a good way to challenge them to say, hey, summarize your article in one minute or in two minutes, depending on its length. <clears throat> uh, finally, with having the activity too long, students notice other classmates engaging in conversation unrelated to the activity. Okay, I, I mentioned that. <clears throat> one more criticism students responded with was the need for having more guidance for what articles to research. Several students noted that they wanted the teacher to give them a topic such as news about the government or famous people, nature, and so on. <clears throat> While not having as many responses, oh, <coughs> sorry, give me a moment. I apologize. <clears throat> While not having as many responses as the other three, several students did comment on how the activity improves certain skills. <clears throat> While the student does uh, highlight that the activity helps improve their summarizing, reading, and speaking skills, uh, they didn't include listening. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, it makes sense. Um, because they weren't having to take notes of what their group members were saying. Uh, it kind of made me suspect that they weren't fully paying attention to, to their, their group members as they were sharing. <clears throat> uh, many of the responses mentioned the activity helped with their summarizing skills. Um, I mean, it makes sense if they're spending their time doing lots of summarizing of articles, it's going to help improve that. Uh, also, a few students commented about the activity helping them specifically with their ability to read foreign news sources. Um, I thought that was uh, quite important, <clears throat> um, being able to uh, expand their ability to read news from different sources and uh, different cultures will help them uh, in the future uh, be able to, to read beyond just uh, local news or, or news from Japan and get their information elsewhere. <clears throat> Finally, students responded with their own desires based on their experiences with the activity. Uh, since summarizing is a major part of the activity, several of the responses included wanting to be better at summarizing news articles. A few students commented that they had some difficulty explaining their articles to their group members and that they wanted to improve their speaking skill. <clears throat> and then uh, finally for this quote, uh, I chose this quote as it was uh, unique compared to the others. The student recognized that they often chose easier opinion articles and that sometimes they wanted to challenge themselves more. Um, <clears throat> so this might be 
uh, a possible indicator that uh, by assigning a specific type of, uh, of article <clears throat> could be a way of uh, getting students to move away from what they're comfortable with to something that's uh, unfamiliar or more challenging for them. <clears throat> so uh, overall, I believe this activity meets the goals I set for the course uh, and helps provide students with a different perspective that they cannot get just from lectures. Uh, students showed a strong interest in the social aspect of the activity and appreciated the opportunity to research information from foreign news sources. <clears throat> a majority of students felt the 10 minute length of the sharing activity was too long. And a few students requested that the researching aspect had more guidance and relevance to the content of the lecture for that day. Uh, based on these findings, I would make the following recommendations. Uh, I would add a time limit to the summary share activity, giving them one or two minutes per group member to discuss their article. Uh, next, while I wouldn't want to completely take away their agency in deciding which newspaper and article to read, depending on the content of the lecture for each class or recent events, I might ask them to find news of a specific topic periodically. Uh, finally, to address the listening aspect more directly, I might suggest making the activity more collaborative. Uh, one possibility is having groups assign uh, members to find an article from a specific section, report back to the group, and then discuss how the various news items are connected to the daily lives of people living in that region. Well, uh, thank you everyone for listening to my presentation. I hope you found it as interesting as I did while going through the results. Uh, if any of you are interested in using this activity in your own class, or if you would like to uh, collaborate on expanding this research to include other groups of students, then please contact me at my email. Uh, this is the end of my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions or listen to any comments you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh... We are going to open it up for questions. We have a couple of minutes left. We could probably take one or two questions if uh, if they're quick. Or perhaps not. Um, if, if, if there are no questions, we'll go ahead and, uh, and wrap up there. Uh, again, if you'd like to unmute to give Chris a round of applause, thank you very much for coming to be with us today, Chris. Uh, really enjoyable presentation. Uh, we are going to close this room briefly uh, at 4.20. Uh, everyone's going to go back to the main room. We have our um, guest speaker, uh, Professor Brian Cullen, giving our presentation on balancing theory and practice and developing materials. Um, and then we'll reopen this room again at 515 uh, for Anton Bagel's presentation on design and education. Looking forward to seeing that. So please come back here uh, to see Anton's presentation. Uh, for now, thank you very much, Chris. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you.